distinguished guests. Let's go to Kenjin. This may be rather obvious, the setup of the energy sector, starting with the policy makers, Ministry of Energy. It's no longer energy and petroleum, just the Ministry of Energy. Then we have the regulator, ERC. We have the energy tribunal, not too much heard of, but handles all the disputes in the sector. And then we have the main function, generation, and that's where Kenjan sits together with the IPPs. We have the transmission function undertaken by Ketraco, Kenya Transmission Company, the distribution, largely most of it by Kenya Power, and also rural electrification, especially off-grid distribution, and then we have the customers. But then over the last 10 years, we have Geothermal Development Company undertaking the downstream geothermal exploration and drilling, and then it avails the steam to Kenjan and other power producers. We have seen a steady growth in electricity demand in the country. And you can look at where we were in 2012, a steady rise of about 6.2% up to where in 2018, and this is the peak demand. The peak demand, I think from six o'clock to 10 o'clock, that's the consumption that the country takes. That is about 1750. Uh, and we see that in going forward, demand will be driven by the anticipated growth in population and economic activity. Increased electricity access, we have seen the last mile program targeting many, many more customers, up to 3 million by 2020, 3 million more. And also implementation of the Vision 2030 projects is anticipated to bring up the demand. Devolution, a lot of economic activities at the county level. And all this will take the demand up. And we are certain that the peak demand will go up probably in the coming year or the coming months. And then we shall look at the national energy consumption in gigawatt hours. And from 2011 uh, to 2017. And the orange one is Kenjan. The purple one is the IPPs. And you can see that Kenjan accounts for about 74% of the energy consumed in Kenya. So the story of Kenjan, obviously 70% owned by government, 30% by the public, having been listed at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Our installed capacity, 1,631 megawatts. You can see our revenue, 34 billion, that was the full year 2017. Market cap, 15, uh, 55 billion. And we can see the, the geothermal potential. The 10,000 megawatts is actually for the country, but in terms of geothermal, Kenjan or Kenya, Kenya is the ninth ranks ninth position in the global geothermal lineup. We were safely number eight until Iceland implemented some projects, but because we are undertaking Olkaria 5, 140 megawatts, and Olkaria 1, unit 6, 84 megawatts, that will be on stream sometime next year and early 2020, we shall safely reclaim our number eight. We have diversified technology. 
we have 50% of our generation being hydro, 818 megawatts. Geothermal is currently 534 megawatts. Wind, a decent 26 megawatts. And thermal accounts for 16% of our energy mix, 253 megawatts. The energy we sold last year, up to December 2017, we are showing the, na the national mix. So in the country, hydro accounted for 28%, geothermal 47%, thermal 23 then the others wind imports and all that, maybe just about 2%. But for Kenjen, our energy mix, it's clear that we have 88% of green energy as Kenjin. Hydro was 38%. This is largely because of the drought. We've had drought for two years in a row. Thermo accounted for 12% of what we sold and geothermal a whooping 50%. Our strategic aspirations can just be simply summarized into three. We want to increase our capacity by 2,500 megawatts, and we want to remain relevant, a large player in the market by 2025, and we shall largely focus on geothermal and also on the renewable energies. We want value creation to provide adequate return to shareholders targeting a return on invested capital of 10%. And then, even as we do our business, as we make profit, our aspiration is to lower tariffs. And we want to profitably supply cheaper renewable energy to this country. And if you look at the geothermal, the hydro, those are the cheap sources of energy, and that's where Kenjin participates largely. So I want to share with you our strategic focus, which is to grow supply ahead of projected demand. And just to say that up to 2007, 2006, 2007, we recall that Kenya did not have adequate power the demand was higher than the supply. We had a very major drought in 2009. I vividly recall we used, customers used to get power three times in a week. We used to have emergency power generators, 290 megawatts, and life was just miserable. In, in 2017, we had even a worse drought than 2007. Customers got power throughout. We had zero emergency power. And that is a summary of the geothermal story that is not shaken by drought, by weather, and therefore we are able to provide power to this country and be able to forget what happened in 2009 and such years. And so we have a strategy that we summarize as good to great. We know Kenjan is a good company. We are on a journey to make it great. We also want to make it sustainable and so that it will be sustainable from one generation to the other. And that's where we have uh, our strategy summarized as G to G, meaning good to great and generation to generation. Our strategy had three horizons by the time we crafted it in 2008. The first horizon, 2008 to 2012, was to stabilize the power situation in Kenya. Like I have told you, how it used to be, very little power, inadequate. I'm glad to report that that was achieved and that was largely stabilized in terms of availability of power. 
And then we went into Horizon 2. We delivered 375 megawatts in renewable. And in 2016, we revamped our strategy, which we are now implementing. And that's how we arrived at what we aspire to deliver, 2,500 megawatts. And then beyond that, we want to explore expansion opportunities beyond Kenya and have an African footprint. So that's the summary of our strategic focus. But then as we move on, we also have a three-tier business model for strategy execution. To simplify it and to understand it, we have KenGen A, KenGen B, and KenGen C. KenGen A is what you see today. Power generation using conventional sources of financing, DFIs, and all that. But we want to implement KenGen C where we want to have partnerships, special purpose vehicles, and we want to attract many more partners to be able to expand our business. And then Kenjan C is to diversify our business portfolio. We also want to undertake other things that are not uh, power generation related. We want to do consultancy. We want to do some water, some industrial parks, and all those things that we can do that are not related to power generation. And at the crossover of 2017 to 2018, we have come up with a theme in Kenjan. We are all rowing the boat together. We are all pulling the next the direction towards the same direction, all our staff, we are rallied together, and we have declared 2017 to be a build year. We will build our company, we will build our resources, our capabilities, our leadership. We are, everything we touch, we want to build it. We want to do that by bringing the best of ourselves. We hope our brand will continue being better, a good reputation and identity, and we want to serve you. We want to serve everybody and interact with Kenyans by being present when it's your time. We want to give that opportunity to you, doing business by not being distracted. So that's our theme for the year. And then just a quick highlight of our financial performance, and we have a summary of our income statements, good steady growth. Though last year we were affected by the drought I talked about, we were also affected by depreciation, but quite a good, good performance. Operating income attributes, we can see a 15% increase in depreciation and that impacted on our lower operating profit. I've already said that. We have seen the uh, electricity revenues grew, also the steam revenue, but the other income declined. Employee expenses also declined, but we can see also what hit us most was the depreciation. But we still had very modest and good results. Our balance sheet, a decent balance sheet in this country. And we have a very strong balance sheet right now at 363,477 billion. Our debt profile, most of our loans are on lent by the government from the DFIs. We have a few direct loans uh, with the DFIs commercial loans of about 13%, and then we have the infrastructure bond. So that is our debt profile. The next slide, shareholder value creation, and this is a very exciting slide, how our share has performed. And I think between our shareholders, they have shared a cool 11 billion 
in the last one year. Then as I finish, I want to share with you our value-based approach to community engagement. Because as you're aware, our installations are not in the city, they are where many communities live. And we would like to create value. We have recently, with the support of Power Africa, come up with a strategy of how to handle uh, the communities for sustainable value creation. And we want to have a social license to operate. And so we are working on things like unity, capacity building, collaboration. And we want communities to be impacted positively by everything we do, as, even as we implement our projects. Kenjan has a corporate social investment. Largely, we support education. We are sensitive to the environment and the conservation and sustainability, and also water and sanitation. So those are some of the things we concentrate on, and we have a foundation that is now concentrating on our corporate social investment. It's just our capacity growth, which is largely on renewables. And out of the 2,500 that we intend to implement by 2025, most of it is uh, renewable. Actually, all of it. And then the way we do our projects funnel, we have the concept, feasibility study, we do the appraisal, and then we go on to development. The last slide is on the ongoing projects. We are undertaking all career five, and that will be commissioned next year, July. That is about 160 megawatts. All career one, unit six, that will be online January 2020. We are rehabilitating our oldest geothermal plant that is seven, 37 years old. We are rehabilitating that and we'll bring it on stream 2021. And other projects including Meru Wind, 80 megawatts of wind on stream 2021. We also have some other wind in Gong that will be phase three, anticipated to be online by July 2020. And so that in summary is the next story, the story of Kenjin. Thank you very much.